when you are exposed to stress, you are supposed to be exposed to it only for only very short periods of time. And the hormones that your body produces during times of stress are extremely useful for helping you see better. They dilate your blood vessels. They make you stronger because they dilate the blood, sorry, the, the pupils of the eye. They dilate so you can see better at, in low conditions. They, they pump oxygen to the muscles so that you're able to, be, so you're able to react more quickly, that you're stronger, you're able to run for longer. Um, your reaction time is improved. Your vigilance is improved. All because normally when you're stressed from the years, millenniums gone by, it was for a serious condition where maybe you're being chased by a lion. Or maybe somebody's about to hit you on the head with a, I don't know, one of those big caveman... Uh, I was going to say baseball bats, but they didn't have baseball bats on them. One of those things, clubs. Um, so basically, you, you had to gear yourself for a fight or flight syndrome. And if the lion's coming for you, you've got to get that, those hormones have got to kick in quickly so that you can run faster so you can climb the tree. And if those hormones didn't kick in, you wouldn't run as fast and the lion would eat you and you'd be dead. So it's very important that you get to that tree. And for that reason, these hormones are vitally important. But, and there's a big but, they are also damaging. The hormones that are released during times of stress, although they help you cope better, they are extremely damaging to your body if they are released all the time. They're not meant to be released continuously. They're meant to be released only enough time for you to get away from that line or to protect yourself or to run the fight or flight response. And if they're around all the time, they increase risk of heart attack, as I've already described. They damage the nerves in the brain. They prevent your ability to, memor to remember. If you're very stressed studying for an exam, you're, you're less likely to remember something. If you're very stressed, I live in Cape Town, and oftentimes I I, I'm running late for the airport, and the, I've got to leave in the next two minutes, or else I know I'm going to miss the plane, because I know it takes me exactly 25 minutes to get to the airport and then park and get within a minute before they shut down the gate. And then all of a sudden I realize I don't have my keys. And I'm running around and thinking, where on earth are my keys? I, and I cannot remember where I've put them. And then I miss my time, and I actually sit down on the couch and think, gee, I'm going to miss my talk, or I've got to change my airplane flight. Nothing I can do about it, and I relax, because I've I'm, I'm, I'm been defeated. And as I'm oh, on top of the piano, or I remember they were inside my little moon bag because I went out to a restaurant last night or whatever, suddenly it comes back to you, because when you're stressed, your cortisol levels are high, your ability to remember things are reduced. Your ability to store memories are, are reduced also. You'll hear of students that go into an exam, and they're so stressed, they can't remember, they, can't, they have a memory blank. Why? Because of stress. You hear of people that, 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 that have road rage and they clobber people to death and they can't remember it. They can't remember doing it because the rage was so all-encompassing, the hormones were so high that you get memory blanks. So stress isn't only about increased risk of heart attack. Stress is also about your ability to function, your ability to perform, your ability to remember, your ability to learn. And they're all to do with high levels of these two hormones. Now in your body you get age accelerating and anti-aging hormones. And in this particular case, I've already mentioned one of the age accelerating hormones, the ones that cause you to die young, one of them that causes you to die younger. And that was insulin, remember? That's why insulin control is so important, because metabolic disease, metabolic syndrome is a disease of high insulin. Two other age accelerating hormones are the ones that are caused when you are stressed. And they are cortisol and adrenaline. Adrenaline. Cortisol raises blood pressure, raises heart rate, raises insulin, which causes diabetes, weight gain. Uh, it suppresses growth hormone. Growth hormone is a hormone that makes your heart stronger, that helps you build new muscle tissue. Um, it causes cortisol, suppresses the immune system. In particular, it suppresses the part of the immune system that helps you fight cancer. More likely to get cancer, more likely to get infections. Um, what else does cortisol do? Um, cortisol can cause electrolyte disturbances, so you get irregular heartbeats. Cortisol itself is directly toxic to the nerves of the brain. I'll just put brain, I don't want to put it. And it suppresses the ability to remember. It's a very damaging hormone. It's a hormone that makes you wake up in the morning. It's a hormone that raises blood pressure, and it's one of the reasons why your heart attack risk is, earlier, is worse in the morning when you wake up, because that's when your cortisol levels are high. Cortisol also suppresses appetite. That's why you have no appetite often in the morning. Your cortisol's high, and it drops down as, you go to sleep, as, you, as the day progresses, and at night time you're sleepy. And that's why it's important to go to sleep when you're sleepy at night, because if you don't, you, and you stay up, and you force your body to stay up, your body actually squirts out more cortisol, and then that tiredness goes away, and you have your second wind. But that's bad, because you're actually making your body produce more cortisol than it needs to. And because cortisol opposes growth hormone, you're supposed to have growth hormone at night. It repairs your body. It, re it regenerates your body tissue. It's an, it's an anti-aging hormone. And by extra amounts of cortisol being secreted at night because you don't get enough sleep, 
you will suppress cortisol. That's also why if you don't get enough sleep, you will gain weight. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. Surely if you don't get sleep, your, metab your metabolism is higher when you're awake than when you're sleeping. So if you don't sleep at night, surely you're going to lose more weight because your metabolism is higher. Correct logic, but no, that's not going to happen because your cortisol levels are high, your growth hormone is low, and cortisol is a big insulin resistance, pre-diabetic, weight gain type of hormone. So cortisol, and cortisol stress is not a good thing because it continuously puts you into this high state of high adrenaline and high cortisol. And the second thing is adrenaline. Adrenaline particularly raises blood pressure and is also damaging to, to the brain. Now, some people thrive off this. They love it. I'm a little bit like that. I like stress. I like to, I like to get to this town and that town and this city and do a talk and put it onto video and, and develop a new product and have a deadline for a magazine. And I, I, I find that my personality is such that I get a bit of a high off it. But it's not good. It's not good for my health. Because people that, that thrive off this, are the only reason you can do it is because your cortisol and adrenaline is high. If your cortisol and your adrenaline was not high, you wouldn't be able to do it because these are the things that make you able to do it. If your cortisol and adrenaline weren't high, you would never be able to get out in the morning. You'd be a tearful and cry and couldn't handle stress and burst into tears when the kid shouts. You, you, you couldn't be able to expose yourself to stress. So the fact that you are able to handle stress is not a good thing. It's a sign that your cortisol and your adrenaline is high, and you mustn't thrive or wallow on the fact that you can do that. And by taking something, let's say, for example, one of the problems of having high levels of cortisol, firstly, is difficulty remembering things and storing memories. But the second thing also, this adrenaline can cause nervousness, insomnia, anxiety, and panic attacks. So the one negative of stress is because of this and the lack of sleep that goes with it, you can get depression and panic attacks sitting in. And then, although, yes, you can take things that will maybe work in the brain, like 5-HTP for depression and, um, and uh, gabapentin or um, theanine, or Valium even, uh, that works on the brain for stress. Understand those things are secondary. You first should look at if the stress, if the depression and the anxiety is caused by stress. First look at getting these hormones under control. These hormones are produced by the adrenal glands. And what is important, these, the two herbs that work on these hormones are rhodiola rosea and ashwagandha. And I've written an article on it. It's called... What you don't know about stress can kill you. It was also in the South African Journal of Natural Medicine, also being adapted a little bit now to recommend the product. But basically, it's all about the research showing how stress and cortisol and adrenaline increase risk of heart attack, reduce your ability to focus and to study, and how rhodiola rosea and ashwagandha, which is in stress damage control, not only alleviates the panic and the, and the memory and the focus. I mean, there's some fant amazing studies being done on rhodiola to show how students, school children, perform so much better on rhodiola rosea than not because the reason is because of the effect it has on memory. And the reason it has stress effects on memory is in high stress environments it opposes cortisol. But the real beauty of stress damage control is the beneficial effect it has on lowering cortisol and adrenaline. Okay. One slightly complicating factor, if you go for many years leaving this untreated, and when I say many years, 20 or 30 years of leaving these levels high, if you haven't died of a heart attack or a stroke, which you could do, but if you haven't yet, your body can actually become exhausted from producing these. And you can actually go into the opposite situation where these levels drop right down. And then you, you, you will be able to identify this person because they'll describe to you how they used to be, handled, be able to handle stress. No problem. And now they can't handle stress anymore. Now they can't get up out of bed in the morning. Now they burst into tears when they have a fight with their spouse. They're, they, they're exhausted and fatigued. And you'll measure their blood pressure. Their blood pressure will be low. And these people... And stressed people, normally their blood pressure is high. And in those people, you can also give stress damage control because stress damage control is an adaptogen. It stimulates low levels of cortisol and adrenaline, but it suppresses high levels. There are very few true adaptogens. Panax ginseng is called an adaptogen, but it actually isn't. Panax ginseng always stimulates. Now, we have another product which is called Burnout. Burnout is used particularly if you are in this low state. After many years, you're completely fatigued, you're not producing any cortisol or adrenaline, and you, your blood pressure is low. There's a write-up here on burnout. That's got Panax ginseng and licorice inside it, and that will always stimulate cortisol and adrenaline. It's more of a riskier product to use because you don't want to use it in the early stages when your adrenaline and cortisol is high. But if you know that the adrenaline and cortisol is low because the person is fatigued and exhausted after many years of stress, can't get out of bed in the morning, then nothing's going to work better than burnout.
Okay, but the best thing really that I suggest is stress damage control. So much so that my feeling is that if you live in Johannesburg and maybe Cape Town, but if you're just living in Johannesburg, you are exposed to enough stress that actually stress damage control is probably more of an important thing to even be using than a multivitamin. Because a multivitamin, at least you're going to get some of them in your diet. You're not going to get any rhodiola rosea. You're not going to get any ashwagandha, the two herbs, in your diet. It just doesn't feature in the South African diet. And it's just so important to reducing the, the, the cortisol and the adrenaline and reducing the risk of heart attack by 600% in between 300 and 600% in stressed individuals and who isn't stressed, that I think it's, it's essential, um, especially given that cardiovascular disease is such a, such a prevalent um, condition.